thanks everybody for coming back. Uh, starting from 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 this time, we will have a bi week uh, schedule. Uh, just the summer is the time to relax. And uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, everything is slowing down. I feel, uh, but but you know that the, all the thinking and uh, and the research uh, uh, is, is 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 still in our mind. So today we're happy to have uh, Ni Jian uh, from John Hopkins. John Hopkins is the center of where all the most use, useful information coming out about COVID. And today we're happy to Ni Jian to talk about how. Healthcare crowd out. Uh, that's that's. I was t ex I was telling Jen that this is the first effect that uh, coming into my mind when the first time that Wuhan was crowded with uh, with the COVID cases. So Ni Jen, do you have a uh, one hour uh, during the uh, uh, presentation? We will we will interject you with questions. It's okay. Thank thanks to go and uh, thanks for everyone um, coordinating this and thanks for. Um, everyone who are attending this, especially for people who are in Asia now. I know this is like a Friday middle night. Um, night. Uh, yeah, this is a joint work uh, with uh, my colleague at Hopkins, Manuel, and also um, my um, uh, um, friends from um, Zhongshan University and the Jinan University, Haizong and uh, Jing. Um, as Zugo mentioned, uh, yes, when this uh, COVID-19, I remember uh, the day when uh, Wuhan announced the close down. I was uh, on a flight from Sydney back to the US. At the moment I entered Houston, I was asking, the, oh, did you travel to China recently? Uh, uh, well, of course, at that time I didn't, but that was the first thing that came into my mind, the, the uh, potential um, healthcare crowd out. So uh, a little bit of kind of background of why we start to work on this project. Um, before the COVID-19 happened, uh, we worked with the company to study the in, uh, interaction between the online and offline channels. Uh, so this is, uh, I mean, to me, this is a very marketing oriented problem. So when this uh, COVID-19 happened, uh, we realized maybe we can do something as well. So as I just mentioned to Jigo, we uh, convinced the company to uh, deliver us the most recent data until, as you will see in a minute, until uh, February 29th, we have the data. So uh, we try to study, uh, first of all, whether there is any like a uh, crowd out uh, happened and uh, what's the effect and how we can handle that. First of all, uh, why would, I mean, as I mentioned, and also like Chico mentioned, uh, this is the thing came into many people's mind and also reflect in many news articles. Here is uh, just a, uh, some of them. Uh, for example, New York Times uh, talking about the uh, dermatologist uh, and also other specialties uh, were drafted uh, for the emergency uh, room and also uh, the second or third, this is the article in Chinese uh, um, by the uh, Xinhua News Agency uh, talking about the, oh, whether people, I mean, um, did not get uh, the certain type of care uh, or um, something related. For example, let's say uh, some um, uh, uh, not directly related, but potentially have the same uh, symptoms as the um, COVID 19 type of things. Uh, will those p uh, patients be treated? And also, of course, there's like a cancer or maybe other chronic disease type of patient, uh, potentially those. Uh, so all these uh, leads us uh, uh, to think, uh, okay, maybe COVID and uh, the related care needs not just in the, uh, those infected the patient, but also like the patient to beyond the lab. I mean, for those, uh, Infected patient, uh, yes, of course, um, the whole resource, the whole attention put on that, um, on them. But on the other hand, there's some like uh, patient, uh, say, say who have who might have some chronic disease conditions. Uh, they might scramble to, to uh, get a test uh, or maybe some um, related the chronic disease management. And even for non 
even for non-infected patient. So uh, potentially there's uh, even for like a mental health issues, uh, get stressed out uh, and accelerated uh, mobility, uh, et cetera. All these things could induce uh, some mental health uh, and anxiety, et cetera. So the question we are going to attack is very straightforward. We try to study, okay, is there any um, like a crowd out more than just the front line? Uh, so that's the kind of um, we are going to study. So the question is very straightforward. And also we focus on non-hotspots. Uh, why? Because, uh, I mean, for places like uh, Wuhan or like New York City in uh, March and April, this seems to be pretty straightforward. Uh, so uh, we focus on those places, uh, I mean, uh, the North Epidemic uh, Center, um, but of course, everyone is uh, impacted by this. I mean, if you want to study this crowd out, uh, uh, healthcare crowd, the most direct approach might be, okay, we just leverage, uh, I mean, some medical claim data, um, but with a public health crisis like this, the question is, uh, where do we find uh, this medical claim data? And also from like the, um, uh, at a hospital administrative perspective, uh, a resource allocation, or like a um, policy maker's perspective. I mean, uh, the timing of getting those data um, is not there. And also in many countries, we might also need to worry about the quality of this type of um, medical uh, claim data if there's uh, any there. Uh, so we opt for uh, like some uh, online demand data. I will explain to you in a minute why we think this can help us to, to identify the crowd in a minute. The advantage of doing this is, okay, I mean, those, I mean, for people in marketing and IO, you might know this type of demand data is, uh, re to a large extent, is really um, available. And uh, the specific data we use is from one of the largest uh, um, Chinese pharmaceutical uh, online pharmaceutical retailers. Uh, and of course, we coupled with uh, uh, the Johns Hopkins, uh, the Center for uh, System Engineering, they, uh, and they collect all these uh, COVID-19 related cases, I guess the famous Hopkins uh, um, panel. Uh, um, the data includes uh, millions of transactions uh, from 31 provinces in China. Uh, the data span um, between January and uh, uh, February 29th of 2020. Um, include uh, 15 uh, therapeutic classes, more than uh, 60 subclasses. In our data, we have more than 7,400 drugs. Um, for those drugs, uh, Roughly like uh, two thirds uh, are so called prescription drugs. They are 36% uh, uh, are the so called over the counter drugs. And we will uh, explain to you in a minute uh, the difference between prescription drugs and uh, the uh, over the counter data are the, uh, I mean, the one of the important uh, source of our identification. Uh, uh, I've got, I mean, by doing this, uh, we can try to identify, first of all, whether there's a healthcare uh, uh, crowd out, and if so, what's the heterogeneous impact across like a different uh, specialties, and, uh, and also how can we devise uh, maybe some uh, policy interventions to help uh, mitigate this. Uh, this is especially true, uh, especially important uh, for if there's uh, second or third wave, I mean, which seems we are unfortunately in this uh, case now. Can I ask you a question about this, uh, about sure. the data? Um, can you say something about uh, who or when do you buy drugs online and when do you buy drugs offline? Yeah, I, I will talk about actually, okay. I think, uh, I mean, two slides, maybe two more okay. Uh, okay. slides now, when we talk about uh, the, uh, why we then can use this data to help us identify the crowd. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the Chinese context, maybe the short answer is uh, uh, honestly, 
um, the, I mean, usually people obtain uh, if for the prescription drugs, people have to interact with the health professional to get a prescription. And uh, according to some statistics, seventy percent of these uh, um, prescription drugs were obtained from like the hospitals, and most of them are public hospitals. Um, but of course, in recent years, because of this uh, um, uh, like uh, online retailing, so uh, I mean, this online um, purchase start to uh, become more and more if you can submit the prescriptions online. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in case I didn't get <laughs> time to finish all those things, here's what we found. Uh, we found the roughly is about like 10% capacity uh, reduction at the peak. Of course, this is for like a non-sport uh, uh, areas. Uh, I mean, I, we feel our, our estimate account for some of like the uh, secure um, impact, like uh, social distance and mobility restrictions, etc., and also uh, robust in terms of uh, uh, some of the inferential um, inference concerns uh, as we shown uh, in some of the robustness checks. And also uh, from the heterogeneous impact across the different specialties, we feel that is largely consistent with uh, uh, medical guidelines and <clears throat> uh, through our conversation with some of the uh, doctors. And then we propose uh, a very simple uh, capacity allocation policy, uh, which we think can uh, meaningfully reduce crowd out without incurring um, much higher cost. <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, as you will, as we uh, all know, there's a kind of wild, uh, like the cross province variations. I mean, cross geography regions variations in terms of uh, COVID-19 exposure. Uh, this graph is uh, uh, from uh, for China, uh, different province in China. The um, black one is for Hubei um, province, uh, which is about, uh, seems a little bit different and, uh, from the others. Uh, that's also, as, that also reflects in some of the, our estimate. Uh, so we later on, uh, as, as I just mentioned, uh, we focus on like a non Hubei uh, estimates. As we uh, feel this might sort of kind of um, uh, contaminate the estimates. So the way we sort of kind of measure uh, the exposure a person exposed to these COVID-19 cases is normalized by the population. Um, of course, we also tried the uh, different measures. Yeah. So this is the measure we set on. Uh, in terms of uh, health capacity, uh, we obtained the information from the uh, Chinese uh, statistics. Uh, as you can see here, there's a large variations across uh, different uh, um, provinces in terms of uh, capacity. Uh, I mean, uh, here, uh, the graph shows uh, uh, is uh, as uh, like, uh, we measured by the uh, doctors, also the um, uh, nurses. Uh, there's a, uh, in the paper, we also discussed, uh, for example, the uh, number of beds uh, in the hospital. Uh, at the end, we've uh, found our estimates at least robust uh, to different measures of these uh, capacity measures. <clears throat> so we do see like the wild uh, uh, variation. And one thing we want to so kind of uh, um, make sure you know, the data is uh, do the provinces which have a large capacity also so can never happen to be uh, have uh, having like more uh, cases. This seems to be not the case, at least from our data. Here's a plot from like the week six of 2020. Uh, as we can see, um, COVID-19 uh, unfortunately did not choose the best prepared um, province. This again sort of kind of suggests uh, this uh, crowd out issues could be very important. 
Can I ask you, this is just a version of the question. So the, the crowd out is going to, I would think that the main danger or, or the, of, of crowd out mm -hmm. is that people that needed to get heart surgery chose not to go uh, to, to, or, to, or people that needed to get a hip replacement uh, or were not able to get a hip replacement. But then uh, that incidence is not, I, I don't think it's likely to show up on, on the online drug data. So if you go to a hospital to get a heart surgery and you're getting some prescriptions, that is going to be filled offline in the hospital's pharmacy, right? So yeah. Uh, I agree for like a big, um, but I mean, actually in our paper, we talk about, uh, for example, as uh, later on when we see the heterogeneous effect across the different specialties, uh, interestingly, for example, like cardiology related the care was, uh, the, I think uh, the second largest crowd out the effect. Uh, I mean, our interpretation is yes, uh, yes, getting the surgery is impossible. And also like the, uh, the follow-up care of those type of surgeries operations might be very important. Right. But those things, uh, yes, can potentially be sort of kind of substituted with the online um, drug. Yes, um, your point is well taken. Okay. Well but, yes. uh, but but I, I, I but do you have data? I mean, I assume that you can show us the online drug purchases. What the online drug purchases are for? Like what exactly? Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. that's your name. Okay. Yeah, this is the one. Okay. Yeah. Um, here we choose. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, different uh, uh, special uh, therapy uh, classes of these uh, drugs we have. We also have like price information, etc. Uh, here we. I mean, for prescription drug uh, for both prescription and the OTC drugs. Uh, um, we have um, uh, we show the information in terms of the number of the transactions and also the units and also the normalized uh, the daily uh, doses. Uh, because of uh, this non-disclosure uh, um, agreement, all the values here are normalized by each column's maximum. Uh, so it's just a sort of kind of uh, um, but one thing uh, we can assure is uh, yes, we. Uh, this is a lead large, even though I cannot publicly say which company provides us the data, um, but if you are familiar with uh, the online um, drug retailing uh, industry in China, this is, is uh, the lead largest. Um, so can, can I ask you a question about this data? So I've seen some evidence that the, the, that the Chinese doctors over, they over, they o o o over prescribe. Does that show up in what you're calling daily medications? So, so my my impression is that they, there's huge o o over prescription, primarily in things like antibiotics. Uh, is that the thing? Because if you look at the daily medication, is the thing that is huge, like several times larger than anything else. Right, um, uh, uh, it's it, it's a hundred relative to everybody else. And, and then the question go, going in terms of what you're going to do is, is that where you see most of the incidents? And, and then and then that may actually be good, uh, if what wow. happens is that is that you <laughs> cut is that you is that you're cutting down on the over prescriptions. Um, like you, yes. I also heard lots of like anecdotic evidence. I mean, in terms of over prescription, um, but I have to admit, that simply from this data, at least for now, we can't say this definitely. I can't say whether it is over prescription or not. But we do. Uh, uh, we did a double check, so I kind of compare uh, this time period data to the ones we have, say, like in 2018 and 2019. Uh, for like January. Uh, of this year's 2020 data, we didn't see any sort of kind of abnormal sort of kind of difference from the previous years. So in other words, yes, we cannot say whether there is any over prescription, but we do see the data we use uh, for January and February uh, for January is consistent with the previous years. Can you explain to us the daily math as well? 
it it is quite big. So what what kind of things are they? Uh, you mean in terms of uh, um, just kind like of the different specialties? Of, uh, what kind of uh, pills or whatever? Yeah, this is across all like the uh, uh, different uh, um, uh, different categories. No, uh, the question is the question is what are daily medications? Yeah, what are daily medications? Oh, you mean the daily? They, uh, what are the samples of like? For example, Some we have. Uh, um, I mean, we have to point out that there are several cases uh, they don't have any or like a very few OTC alternatives. For example, for diabetes, for HIVs, we don't have that. And also, uh, I mean, uh, for COVID nineteen related symptoms like a cough, fever. Uh -huh. Uh, respiratory uh, difficulties, uh, for example, like the, uh, I even know how to say it, uh, gambling uh, granules, right? So this is the leading uh, use of the product for like a fever reduction. A fever reduction, I see. So daily meds, you know, one example would be fever reduction. That's yeah. Good. Okay, that's good to keep in mind. Mm. Okay, uh, so. The question is, uh, yes, how this like a drug demand data reflect the healthcare utilization? Mm -hmm. uh, so again, this is a kind of uh, uh, link to, I think the uh, original questions in terms of uh, um, how this uh, online data can help us uh, to identify the like, crowd. I mean, the idea of this is pretty straightforward. So in the Chinese context, I guess in the US as well, uh, in this sense. So like uh, we try to use the relatively prescription drug over the OTC uh, demand the change. Uh, this can be informative about the healthcare utilization. Why? Because the prescription drug transactions require the interaction with the healthcare providers, but the OTCs, uh, they don't, okay. So a little bit more in terms of a Chinese uh, institutional characteristics, which can help, uh, which help uh, shape the, the interaction uh, interpretations. So the, the key observation here is, uh, given the most medical care and the prescription drugs are distributed uh, through the public hospitals in China. Uh, <clears throat> and the two products that we can, I mean, the prescription drug and the uh, ODC, they can see and sort of kind of as an implicit bundled. I mean, uh, we can see like, uh, oh, sorry, not the, uh, the uh, prescription drug and the healthcare consultation. Uh, you mean like uh, visiting the doctors. So this could be sort of kind of seen as a bundled. Uh, and also uh, there's some like statistics showing, uh, I also mentioned earlier, 70% of these outpatients feel uh, their prescription drug in hospitals or pharmacies. Uh, so, I mean, of course, the reason behind this uh, uh, is not just about the, the convenience. It's, for example, the great insurance in terms of quality, physicians, recommendation, and easy in terms of handling non-standardized uh, prescription, etc. So, um, I guess, I mean, uh, the mo most recent data we have is uh, um, by the middle uh, 2020, um, uh, uh, 2015, the public hospitals, the pharmacies, they account for like roughly like 80 percent of prescription shares in in China. Uh, Excuse me, pardon my my ignorance, but I need a little bit of institutional background. Do you mean that most of the sick people would have to go to the hospital to see the doctors to get prescription and get the uh, the the, med uh, the medication through the hospitals? Yeah, I mean, Why is the case? In, in, in the Chinese I, context, I mean, like if I have some, some serious illness, I go to the hospital, like, but say uh, there are people who are diabetes, there are people who have heart conditions and whatnot, they just basically don't need to go to see a doctor. Uh, they, they do check up once a year or so on, but they get the prescription and buy the drugs uh, through the, 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 the yeah, found through the pharmacies, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, for prescription drugs, yes. 
Right. But so why of course, so there's a relax uh, of this uh, restriction. I think from 2000, uh, maybe two or three years ago, uh, like you say, the Yaofang, the pharmacies, they start to have some mm -hmm. like a pharmacist. But I right. still don't think uh, they can prescribe uh, the uh, prescription drugs. So you they mean can the doctor use can the prescription. Um, <laughs> Let us say I go to see a doctor and the doctor identify that I have this and that and so I need I need to take uh, uh, medications regularly. Then every mm -hmm. time I have to go to the hospital get my medicine? No, not everyone. In, in, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I see your point. Yes, for the first time, yeah, um, most likely, yes. Um, and also, I mean, for some people, they did that as well. Right. Um, right. But yes, that's like the, uh, the, the pharmacies and also the online pharmacies. Yes, for like the uh, follow up, yeah. they don't have to. But still, for example, my mom, I have, uh, um, she has the diabetes. So she still get the, her like uh, a monthly um, diabetes or kind of. Uh, Related really drugs uh, from the hospitals pharmacy. Yeah, I, I just want to add that my mom has a kidney transplant, so she needs to uh, get uh, frequent those like pills. Mm -hmm. uh, the way it works is a two month. Just you, you need to you need to come back yeah, to see the doctor. For the I, I mean, what the, 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 the institutional context for me right now is very important. There are people who need. Uh, uh, regular care, maybe once every two months or so on and so forth. And with the, the pandemic going on, they may get crowded out and crowding out of these people can be unfortunate, okay? At the same time, sometimes like we have a lockdown in Singapore and so I just don't go to, uh, to do my checkup. The, the, mm -hmm. the doctor can say you postpone and then can they can even hand deliver uh, the, the regular like my wife need to have the hypertension, we just go to pharmacies and get it. So I uh, see the, the pattern of behavior is very important in understanding whether there's crowd out and how, how serious the economic effect is. I agree. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, I don't know whether in, the, in many provinces or many cities, so there's uh, people who can deliver the pharmacy is directed to the house, but I mm, heard towards, I mean, the middle or the end of like uh, Wuhan uh, closed down. Yes, uh, since the government organized some like a community help uh, to help delivery, but not to minority in terms of other provinces, which are not epidemic center of this. So that's what I, kind I of also, from the Singapore context. I also understand that in some cities, including Hong Kong, a lot of the regular things they postpone. Uh, so the examination of the age to about your heart, your, I mean, many of this regular checkup, which can be very important, uh, they are delayed because of the situation. And those can be quite serious, meaning that the long-term cause, if something happened, can be can be pretty high. Yeah, that's really, let, I think that. that's all um, behind the why we want to figure out, I mean, uh, in other words, we sort of kind of uh, the magnitude of the healthcare crowd out. But the, I mean, with all the uh, situations you mentioned, I will say our estimate seems to be a lower bound. Mm -hmm. Even if it's still so just- is there, some, is, is there some, some way before before the pandemic, you use the same data to validate a little bit about the, the, the relationship between your outx and OTC, you know, the various things with- uh, Yeah, we uh, do have like a pre-trend analysis. I think uh, later on we will show that. Uh, I mean, of course, we can use, uh, I mean, like the, um, the 2018 and the 2019 data. I think we did have that, but we just didn't include in a paper. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. We, we, okay. Do, yeah. So the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's be careful at the time. <laughs> so yeah, I mean the whole point though, well, uh, because of this like a uh, unique context, uh, we want to, like and uh, yes, we utilize the difference between the prescription drug and the OTC. 
to kind of help us to tease out the uh, um, healthcare crowd out. I mean, in the Chinese context, more utilization means like a more offline um, prescription drug, less online. I mean, once this, the pandemic hits, there's substitution between online and offline, right? Uh, however, this is not the sort of kind of, I mean, of, uh, here we uh, want to use the data to show a little bit that there is a relationship between this online uh, uh, demand data and also the capacity of the uh, healthcare capacity. We run uh, like the uh, negative binomial uh, regression, so using the January before the pandemic hits. And we do see like the kind of uh, uh, the capacity increase is a kind of uh, um, uh, like uh, online demand decrease. So in other words, we can uh, there's a substitution um, between these. Uh, so for uh, um, how do we identify this crowd out? The ones, I mean, we have this, uh, um, like, I mean, the difference between the OTC and the prescription drug Yes, they, um, they are not the kind of, uh, uh, for the crop, um, they, they help inform us in terms of the healthcare utilization, but not in terms of the crowd out, uh, in a sense. So they, we need another layer of the kind of the difference, which we utilize uh, is in terms of uh, like this online, uh, the healthcare capacity variations across the different uh, provinces. Uh, so, uh, here, this table is a kind of, I mean, in other words, uh, what we call like a difference in difference in difference, which uh, uh, originally uh, used by Johnson Grubber in his 1994 AR paper. Uh, I mean, as you, will, as you already saw, the first difference is uh, the difference between prescription drug and the OTC uh, during like this, um, before and uh, uh, after uh, pandemic, that's the difference in difference, which uh, everybody might be familiar with. The third sort of kind of the difference we utilize to help us to identify the crowd out, here is just the kind of the illustration, the below median capacity versus like the above median capacity uh, um, provinces. Uh, again, the table we saw here is a normalizer one uh, because of, I mean, this means like the uh, um, as you can see, the, uh, here, the high level of online um, prescription drugs will create with a lower level of the healthcare utilizations, as you can see here. Um, okay. So we further so kind of uh, uh, draw a graph, and as you can see, I mean, I mean, the identification assumption here is a kind of the OTC can serve as a sort of kind of counterfactuals uh, without this like a pandemic hit. Uh, you can see for these two type of uh, um, uh, uh, provinces, even after the, kind, uh, the pandemic, their uh, trend seems to be uh, very similar. Uh, but for the OTC, uh, for the prescription drugs, uh, they're different, right? Uh, and this sort of kind of help us in terms of the uh, identification, um, the whole sort of kind of identification argument behind uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, our triple D um, uh, estimation. I missed something. Uh, what's the role of a bit below versus above? Typically, DDD, like we only have two, two control, two control groups. Yeah, DDD, DID, yes. Why do you need a to control group? Your, mean, your, your treatment is a Hubei, right? No, uh, before, Sorry, mm -hmm. no. Uh, the, the, here is, a, first of all, the, the difference is between like a prescription and the OTC. Yeah, yeah, that's- The clear. second is before and after the pandemic. That's also very clear. I'm okay, the and the third above. is uh, below and above this median capacity. Okay, and yes. uh, from the previous slides, I don't see any significant difference. No, right? the below and the median uh, uh, this, capacity. No, this, little difference is, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, this is a rough sort of kind of, of pure from the transaction volume. 
Okay, and what's the role of Hubei here? No, Hubei is we should, uh, Hubei is different. Okay. We should kind of Hubei, uh, yes, we just want to show Hubei is even more potentially. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I see. So mm -hmm. you want to, so the story, you know, you want to show us that above this effect is stronger. So hopefully this 0.14 is very big. Uh, unfortunately, of course, that the significance is not that big, but you say that, that this is a good enough. Uh, Right. Is it the logic? Yeah, from the law data. This is from the law data. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is from the law data in terms of the transaction. Mm. And the graph is just to sort of kind of further illustrate the, the, uh, the identification behind this. Because we sort of kind of crawl out with just the DID, uh, we, without at least the third level of the difference of the capacity, media, uh, above median and uh, Media, we cannot uh, we cannot tease out. I mean, identify the crawl out, but with this, the above capacity, a median capacity, and the below median capacity, that help us to identify the uh, the crawl out. Yeah, and and in Hubei here, this picture sh it shows that the prescription actually goes up. Then it's probably because of the COVID. Is that your uh, your interpretation? I mean, that's our conjecture. But uh, yes, um, I mean, again, like I say, uh, later on, we will, you will see our estimation results. So we have the results with Hubei and without Hubei, but we don't want to say this crowd out. Uh, we identify in our estimation is driven by this Hubei data. As you will see in a minute. It's actually, we do have like uh, all provinces and uh, Hubei data excluded. Even with the Hubei data excluded, we see the significance uh, here. Okay, any question? Go on. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, here's like the specification. Uh, as you can see, I mean, um, like the dependent variable is the uh, uh, transaction. We also uh, tried uh, several uh, uh, like uh, uh, um, doses and also the units. We controlled the, all kinds of uh, um, envelope uh, heterogeneous like the fixed effect. Uh, we also try uh, several different uh, specification and the negative binomial is the result. And we also, I mean, of course we know like negative binomial is uh, I mean, with all these kind of uh, fixed effect could be like a highly um, saturated. Uh, so we also tried like a log linear specification uh, with uh, um, drug level, uh, um, yes. more, specific, more detailed uh, 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 fixed effect. Uh, so the point, I mean, the parameter of interest for us is this beta uh, eight. Uh, if um, we use this like the inverse of the uh, capacity is just for like easy of the interpretation. It's uh, beta eight, let's say uh, it's a great little increase the kind of uh, large crowd out effect. Okay, so estimate the crowd out is proportional to this beta eight, um, whatever the case is you know, normalized by the doctors. Mm. So here is our estimate. Again, uh, as I mentioned, the, the table A include all provenance. Uh, table B, we exclude the Hubei data out. Uh, and table C, we sort of kind of try the like, different uh, uh, measure in terms of capacity. Instead of using the physicians, we use the physician and the nurses. Um, okay, even though in the Chinese context, the nurses play a less uh, important role. I mean, I, I'm talking about the prescription itself, not in terms of uh, the healthcare per se. <clears throat> Um, and uh, we for, uh, further uh, uh, utilize, uh, I mean, uh, remember we have this regression here, we kind of link the home line healthcare demand and the capacity uh, because the estimate that we get here uh, is related to the capacity, uh, but uh, remember the capacity is sort of kind of relatively uh, static. So we sort of kind of calculate the implied the crowd artifact uh, using this graph. Uh, 
across all the 31 provinces. Uh, this is the, the um, black dash one, is the population weighted aggregate uh, um, across all these provinces. What we find uh, roughly so kind of like a 10% as we mentioned during this epidemic uh, peak. Uh, we translate this into um, like the uh, reduction in terms of non COVID 19 care. Uh, this seems to suggest that one additional case per 1,000 physicians will lead to like a 4% reduction in terms of uh, non COVID 19 care. <clears throat> okay, we, we further did uh, um, many kinds of like robust check. Uh, for example, we instead of using uh, the exposure during that week, uh, we used the first lag. Uh, we also uh, measure the exposure uh, on like each week's uh, first day instead of uh, the whole week. Uh, and also we conduct... Yeah. Uh, yes? Question? Yep. Uh, uh, we also, um, I mean, uh, in terms of the total recorded cases, in terms of uh, instead of the weekly uh, increase uh, the cases, uh, we also, I mean, uh, I mean, there's also some kind of report in terms of uh, uh, indicating the physicians they were sent from across provinces to Hubei. And uh, I mean, the information seems to suggest uh, uh, those the kind of numbers are pretty small. Uh, roughly, we calculate it's like maybe uh, 23,000 out of 3.6 million uh, nationwide. Uh, so roughly like a 0.6 um, percent. So we did not regard this as a major concern in terms of crowd out in the, in the other provinces. Uh, and also, uh, I mean, potentially there's a, a kind of short-term endogenous uh, capacity adjustment like uh, Hubei build this uh, uh, Huoshenshan Yuan, right? Um, but it, it seems to be a kind of uh, uh, not uh, the case, at least in the other provinces. So uh, again, this sort of kind of suggests that even if this effect can in, uh, induce some sort of kind of bias, our estimate still uh, in, uh, exhibit a measure of in terms of uh, uh, all these kind of uh, external validity by virtue of their variation across, I mean, uh, different classes. Uh, that's sort of kind of uh, what we calculate uh, across like the different uh, product classes. This also related to uh, what specialties they potentially um, impact more, most by this uh, crowd out. Uh, this is a uh, graph with a kind of uh, um, a, a compute based on uh, our results. Uh, as you can see here, um, we sort of kind of, uh, the largest estimated effect is in the dermatologist. Uh, um, okay. Uh, and also uh, like the bone and the joint. Uh, I mean, again, uh, it seems to me, it's sort of kind of at, the, at least at the first glance, this seems to be a little bit of a kind of counterintuitive, uh, given the cardiologist the kind of conditions they can potentially call, cause lots of death. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one potential factor we can, we can think uh, to explain this results is uh, a significant amount of uh, uh, cardiology related care. They may be regards to the kind of routine follow-up checkups, uh, which may be sort of kind of expendable in terms of a uh, short term. Uh, and one thing I want to point out, none of these classes, including um, products, targeting the COVID-19 related symptoms. Uh, so in other words, uh, um, I mean, this seems to be sort of kind of, uh, yes, um, have some like uh, external validity. And further, if you look at the uh, ranking in terms of uh, um, uh, this crowd out across a different specialty, and um, the doctors seem, um, I mean, we talked, uh, seems to suggest, uh, okay, our estimates are consistent with uh, the COVID-19 kind of field uh, medical uh, a reduction in terms of uh, non-COVID-19 uh, really the care. In, uh, this is consistent with the medically uh, guided uh, prioritization. <clears throat> 
Okay, any questions? Okay, so now, um, I mean, can we do sort of kind of some like uh, interventions to help uh, mitigate uh, this capacity uh, um, crawl out? Uh, so we propose uh, what we call the like, alpha reserve capacity. I mean, of course, uh, uh, we can do simply sort of kind of equalize the marginal productivity of the doctors across the province. Uh, and we did that, uh, and we found the problem with this is uh, is the kind of unreasonable low effectiveness in terms of capacity. Uh, in other words, the cost could be potentially higher. Uh, so we propose what we call the, this alpha reserve capacity allocation. So, um, how did this work? So essentially, the way we suggest is for each province, they can reserve alpha proportion of the doctors for their in-province care. Uh, and lastly, one minus alpha contribute to the national pool. Once the kind of the emergency, I mean, the, a severe situation happened, this national pool can be allocated based on the, the marginal conditions. Uh, we can, uh, uh, from, the, um, from what are our results. The large cases, uh, um, a doctor's uh, ratio in a, on a given week, uh, so therefore uh, they need more doctors, those provinces, those regions. Okay, um, but we always keep some like a reservation uh, capacity and uh, not um, below alpha. So, uh, I mean, from this, uh, this graph, we can see, I mean, the location, um, this is what we call the, <coughs> like the uniform wave. Uh, this is the first wave essentially is like uh, what happened in China and Hubei, okay. Uh, from our uh, <clears throat> like the proposed policy, the dash line uh, here illustrates the gain in terms of uh, what we call the maybe like extreme uniform uh, wave, and uh, the uh, small dash line, what do we call like uniform like a half uh, wave, let's say like a second wave is a little bit milder, so therefore uh, how can this help? It seems like kind of in both, uh, we can see the, um, the pool um, contributions through our sort of kind of alpha reserve policy can reduce the crowd out uh, in about the same way as in the uniform wave in this like the, uh, semi uh, uh, half wave. So the, this similarity seems to suggest uh, our policies are kind of, uh, uh, they benefit the, um, primarily depends on like the second waves, the case per physicians, the disparities, rather than its overall the kind of case count. Okay, so in other words, the kind of related to the capacity issues. In, okay. in, in this picture, what's the difference between your first wave? Like what, what is the underlying thing different between waves? You mean this wave and this, or this, these two? What do you mean by wave, I guess? Oh, um, the pandemic hits. The pandemic hits, and there's some underlying model about the case transmission. Is it what do you mean by wave? Uh, no, I mean we didn't get into in terms of transmission. We get into in terms of the number of the cases. Oh, number of cases. I yes, see. And so that, that's the, sort of kind of how we measure the exposure. I see, and and then you take the perspective of the whole country, and then calculate the. Uh, calculate uh, how much resources you have. Yes, and in the uh, paper, we also calculate uh, for different provinces. Okay. We actually also think about the, where we can use uh, like a heterogeneous uh, uh, alpha. In other words, the different uh, provinces, okay. uh. they might have different alpha. Yeah. But here, the results we show here is uh, the, I mean, the, the same alpha across uh, the provinces. Okay, so, um, and also uh, we show uh, in this graph, on this graph we show sort of kind of uh, uh, reallocation uh, um, the, throughout the, the kind of uh, um, the physician care for like patients from the other provinces. So again, we can see our um, uh, proposed policy doesn't need uh, a lot in terms of reallocation. Um, 
So in other words, uh, for, I mean, even though we cannot directly calculate the financial cost of uh, uh, this policy, but at least this suggests the less reallocation needed, I mean, less costly, uh, this, um, uh, our proposed policy uh, can help to mitigate the crawl out. So in summary, with a kind of we use this uh, triple difference of kind of uh, based on the Chinese institutional context in terms of uh, uh, the difference between prescription drug and OTC drug uh, before and after pandemic, and also like the different capacity across the geographic regions can help us to. Uh, tease out the crowd effect we found uh, during the peak time. Rough, I mean, again, this, I will say this is a conservative measure, the 10% uh, the capacity reduction. Uh, and then we sort of kind of propose uh, what we call the like a reservation, alpha reserve reservation policy, uh, which we think can be uh, operated through, let's say, telehealth. Uh, uh, this can help uh, reduce the crowd effect and require relatively fewer in terms of uh, uh, physician reallocation. Uh, in other words, the kind of uh, uh, smaller cost. Um, okay, so again, um, I think that's it. Thank you. Thanks, uh, I, have, I do have a question. Go back to your most, uh, I mean, to us, to me at least is the pictures. This is the picture where you have a triple diff picture. Yes, here. Yeah, this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 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 now I think I understand it more. I you see that the, the OTC actually drops faster. Mm -hmm. Isn't that opposite to what you're trying to say? Oh the the, the trend uh, from the time time wise, which means that uh, like over the counter, you don't need to see the doctor, but it drops faster. Yes, I understand that below, after, or below and above, it's almost the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. but it just means that there's something else going on to maybe the, you know, this logistics thing, so that the people, like just the, the OTC drop, purchase, yeah, so like drops. In other words, so what do you suggest is there's some unobserved factors, right? Yeah. But that should be sort of kind of, I mean, taken care of by some of like the... Yeah, I understand okay. that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Suppose you have some, some, some transportation. What I try mm -hmm. to understand is that if anything, that should apply both. So therefore, our X should go down. Uh, as Do you mean like the, there's a drop from here to here, right? Yeah, and, and then, then in your story, our uh, subscri subscription has another additional effect, which is that you need to see the doctor, and I worry that if I'm to go to the hospital, the, uh, I get American, yeah. be infected, so therefore I don't go. Okay, so if the, 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 the effect is like, you know, these like a, 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 a treatment additive structure, then you should see our X drop go down even quicker. Is that right? Or, um, um, you mean, or maybe uh, alternative you mean will be say that Rx is uh, a prescription, there's a, some very, very persistent demand there, even even with the, those shocks about the, the logistics. So more more in the elastic. I mean, yeah, more in elastic. elastic. Maybe, maybe that's what's going on. I mean, I, I can only provide the, this conjecture as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but one thing we do see, like, uh, um, yes, even with this drop, it seems the kind of, I mean, like I said, the similar for different uh, provinces, right? Yeah, I understand. And, understand. and what's interesting, the Hubei, why it's it's flat? <laughs> yes. Do you have so any also, sense like, uh, of we what's thought, going like, on? Like, Hubei data is a little bit uh, different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and that's really why. In our four core results, the table B, I should do you guys, uh, we want to exclude the, the Hubei and we still find this effect because we don't want this Hubei data drive the whole effect, and which is not the case. Good. Any other questions?
I'm sorry, Dada. Thanks, Jen, again for the presentation. Thank this is something really new to me. And Thank you. Uh, Thank you, uh, everyone. Very, very interesting talk. Uh, our team will follow up. That try, you know, if you have some pictures you want to show with us, that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, you can you can send us uh, afterwards. So Kara will will follow up. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, next week we're trying to line up with someone uh, to study the death rates of the of the of the emerging markets. And you probably know that. Uh, Seems like it's a very striking pattern that the emerging markets has a much lower uh, death rates than the developed countries. Um, you could have a lot of uh, uh, stories behind <laughs> it, but to me, that's really interesting. Um, what do you mean next week or the week after? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The week after. So, so starting from this, uh, the summer schedule is by week. Thanks, for Bernie, for correcting me. Uh, if uh, that's all, uh, see you two weeks from now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.